I, I, I don't I don't I don't know what to, if you're putting if you're putting like eight hours into like Fortnite a day and you're like, hey, they didn't do an update. It's been three months since they didn't. Hey, man, people got to eat and sleep and poop and stuff. You got to <laughs> you got to figure out you got to scale back. Uh, I mean, I, I don't I don't know. You know, development is 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 crazy and, and like you said these are big updates so they're always releasing small patches and other things and those can happen you know in between and time random, a little, yeah just randomly yeah. just infrequently they can hot fix something you know hello and welcome to level 115 of the thoughts and players podcast the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached i am jeremy here with my compadre david what up? How are you doing this fine evening? I'm a uh, I'm a little hot. My AC broke, so uh, I got the window open, but it does yeah. not do it justice. It don't. It don't. I think it was like a humid eighty something out there today. Oh yeah, and you know what's funny? As a house owner, mm-hmm. there's not necessarily a time frame for which something breaks. Like oh, this this last. 10 years this last five years no it lasts when one thing breaks everything else goes yeah i i don't have an oven i don't have a dryer i don't have a washer i don't have ac i'm i'm waiting for the fridge to go i got the Uh, sink in the kitchen has a small leak like it all happened at once yeah i need a new lawnmower oh no it's it's crazy it's not a matter of time frame it's a matter of when everything goes yeah oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's uh I, I mean a little bit better i mean there was there was i will say that my ac was working i did have a little bit of water thing going on it a few weeks ago and i and i was able to fix it because i think what happened is that the, the inside of it got too cold some ice formed it was pushing water out i had to turn it off for about 24 36 hours let everything melt let it get kicked out, and then everything ran smooth. Right. So Dang. that seemed like it was going to be something that's ridiculous mm-hmm. um, that uh, that got avoided. Now, I eventually am going to have some major stuff that needs to be done. You mentioned a sink, a sink leaking. Well, when it rains good for a couple of days, I have my house leak. So I have to get that whole thing <laughs> figured out. Um, oh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, that's not going to be fun, but you're right. It's... um. The benefit, I guess the good thing is that economists and people say that somewhere we are building a thing called equity. So though we are homeowners and it costs us money, it is somehow making us more money that is unrealized. So touche. We are though we are poor in real money, we are rich in theoretical money. And that's oh yeah. That's that's that really what counts. matters, right? Exactly. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we hope that you are living a splendid life with your theoretical money as well as possible real money. Uh, And, uh, yeah, we want to thank you for joining us in on this level of the pod. We've got a couple of topics really excited and interested in getting into. But before we jump into those, let's start with what we always start with, and that's what we're playing. So I can start, or David, if you want to take it, you can hit it off. Let's go. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about the games I have been playing. I have been playing um, really mostly just one game. Just one? I, a, a game that I believe I am, and I tried my darndest last night. I was up very late, ungodly hour. Should not have been up that late, but I was able to recoup. My body was able to recoup. Oh. However... I believe I am an hour to an hour and a half away from beating Expeditions Rome. That's yeah, right. buddy. Let's go. You look at my steam. I can pull up my steam right yeah, now. Yeah, see it. What do you got? And I believe that if I look at this game, that playtime steam has me at 60 and a half hours. Okay. Um, That's crazy for you, man. Here's what I'll say. It's time. Uh, it, huh? uh, it's time. You said it was coming, and it did. You got to start wrapping this up. So I'm glad that I've gotten there, because we got to start wrapping this up. Your boy was, I was sitting there nigh four or five hours ago saying to myself, 
I don't know if I'm going to make it. I put mm-hmm. so much time into this. I don't know if I'm going to make it. This thing is taking way too long. Luckily, it's four acts total for the game. The third and fourth act. Um, well, the third act is shorter than the previous two. And the fourth act is essentially an epilogue. Um, I am right now with my character. I have helped conquer Asia Minor. I have conquered Egypt. And while being in Egypt, I killed Ptolemy and Cleopatra. Just completely murked. Um, and in the third act, I conquered Gaul. I did something that I'm pretty sure actually Julius Caesar did it historically accurately, but I don't I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I conquered Gaul and I decided not to disband my two legions and I have invaded Rome in an attempt to become the emperor. So I got to play my cards right here. Yeah, I got to do good strategies. I got to get people on my side. I got to play some politics. I got to do some politicking. But I am hoping that within an hour, an hour and a half more of gameplay, that my that my person, uh, Petitus, Valerius, something else, will become the that's first emperor of Rome or dictator, whatever you want it to be. Uh, so, yeah. And that's pretty much the reason why that's the only game I've been playing is because I said I got to focus in, I got to hunker down, and I got to break, I got to get through this. I got to get through. And like I said, I'm an hour to an hour and a half out. If I can beat this thing tonight, I'll be happy. I have avoided purchasing other games because I'm like, you will not buy another game until you beat this game. And it sucks because Kingdom Come Deliverance was just on sale for $4. And I could have got that game for $4 and I didn't. And it's now $40 again. Because I couldn't beat Expeditions Roman time because of these stupid freaking yeah. RNG events that happens when I'm on the world map and it slows me down. You couldn't even give yourself a break for a no. sale like that? No, I couldn't. That's I couldn't. Crazy. I could have got the base game with a lot of stuff for three dollars, or the base game with all the stuff for four dollars, or I think the base game and everything else else for nine dollars. The game was extremely cheap, but guess what? You know what else Kingdom Come Deliverance is, David? You know what else it is? It's another forty-plus hour game. I just say I, another single. I ain't, I ain't got it in me right now. Right now, I need, to, I need to get this one out the way and then pivot to another game I already have, so I can knock that out and give myself more of a reason to get other games that I may want. I mean, that actually didn't stop me from buying another game. So now that I'm remembering, right? In the interim of us actually having recorded this, there was another game I talked about getting that I did end up getting. So I did break my rule for a game. Oh. However, because I broke the rule for that game, I denied myself Kingdom Come Deliverance. So okay. I haven't I haven't really Give played it, it in the past. Yeah, I haven't really played it in the past week or two, but I think I might have remembered. I think I might have uh, mentioned a game called Big Ambitions. Maybe. It's like a business life sim game. Oh, yeah. 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 So I acquired that, and I was able to play. I was trying to figure out, am I going to like this or not? I don't know. Well, first night I had it, I put three hours into it in a blink of an eye. So yeah, I'm going to play it. That's there it is. Um, I I created a character, Alex Zhang, and I opened up a business, Zhang's Flowers. I'm the only florist in the garment district of New York, and business is booming. We're making about between four to seven thousand dollars a day. I've been able to uh, hire a couple of employees, and now I'm now opening up my second business called Zhang's Liquor. All right, I'm gonna hire someone there. We sell whiskey, beer, all different types, all different types of ales, right? Um, eventually, I will open up another store. Like I'm gonna open up a clothing store. It's gonna be. I want to open up my idea, my fantasy is to open up a huge, big, nice, expensive clothing store in Upper Manhattan, and it's just gonna be called Zhang's. And people are going to go in there, and they're just going to buy, and it's going to it's going to print like fifty thousand dollars a day Ugh. in profit. So um, I have, I don't know you if you could say used. business is blooming. Very nice. I like it. I like it. See, see, that's and that's that's the tagline it should be because see, I wanted to do something different. I thought thinking back on it now, I shouldn't have did Jean's liquor. I should have opened up another Jean's flowers. And I should just have a bunch of Zhang flowers until I can eventually create Zhangs. Because, I mean, you know, you gotta, 
every store sells different uh, different things, so you have to get your supplies. So right. with my flowers, I have to get I have to get cheap flowers and expensive flowers, and I had and I sell cheap gifts and different stuff like that. Well, now I got a liquor store. I got to buy whiskey and beer and wine and like you know what I'm saying instead of just buying more of the same type of thing for my second location, I'm buying different elements. So I complicated it for myself there. But the hope is, hey, these things are worth worth a lot of money. There's not a lot right. of other businesses that have it. So I'm hoping that Zhang's I'm hoping Zhang's kicks off. I had a couple of tries earlier where I played as someone named Alex Lacroix, who was a French. Didn't work out, so I went with Alex Jong to, to, to switch things up, and Jong is taking off. Um, just you know, take your time. You know, it could it could be a Jong time until you get stuff going. It could be, it could be a very Jong time, but I I think that uh, hopefully if I'm doing the right things, it won't it won't take as Jong as it as it otherwise would. So um, yeah, so that's the game I had a little bit, but mostly. It's been Expeditions of Rome. I'm trying to become Caesar and get this thing cracking. Get done. Get done. Get done with this game so I can go buy and play something else. Yeah, you, know, they, you know what they say. When in Rome, take it over. When in Rome, take it over. 100% true. Uh, one game, just quickly, one game I have not been playing. NC, uh, EA Sports College Football 25. I might are, give are it another it? go a little bit. I oh, think okay. I'm done with it. Yeah. I think I'm going to try it maybe a little bit more. And then I'm done with it. It's over. Let's go ahead and get done with it. There's so many other games that have come out. Uh, what is it? Uh, Black Myth Wukong and and all these other games that have come out that I'm more interested in. You know, I'd rather just play those. So right. that's it for me. That's it for me. How about yourself? Um, I've been playing a lot of Royal Match and TFT. I'm starting okay. to kind of get the concept more on TFT. Yeah. They released a single player tft um format it's a 30 rounds with six bosses and it's the same thing every time so like you okay. know what's coming yeah but you know of course you still have to select your heroes and the the pool that you're pulling from you still have to only have the five and have to roll for new ones and it's still the same as that game it's just that you're not playing other people anymore and mm -hmm. you can take as long as you want there's not 15 seconds in between rounds there's a button you have to press that says fight on it so you can take okay. as long as you want so if anybody ever wanted to play tft but was unsure because of how fast paced it is it's hard to learn now you can really take your time and read everything and understand everything and i think that's a good way to go because uh my my partner downloaded it she's yet to play but she's very interested and this is a great way to teach her how everything works Mm -hmm. and how to place your characters and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then i, I was kind of getting bored with pokemon go i haven't played a lot lately but just yesterday they released the new uh generation i don't even know what freaking generation it is anymore the 10th 11th 30th okay. something like that yeah. yeah and they put in the dynamax and I forget what the other one is, but it's another something max. So like the Pokemon are like really huge and now they have different mm. uh, attacks and healing and like stuff like that. So it's a whole new system in the game. So now I'm kind of going back into it. Yeah. And then of, uh, of course, I've been playing my apex and the finals and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um. How, how, how's feelings on, on the finals does it feel like it's being firmly adapted as maybe that 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 third game in the in the rotation there yeah I, I think so i i'm of course stuck just playing competitive mode every time and right now it's only one game mode i think it's called cash grab okay so like you have to run and get these uh vault boxes mm -hmm. and you have to they un un lock or whatever and it takes like 10 seconds and then you have to take the box and bring it to this uh atm looking thing to put the box in and if you control the box until it's opened you get the cash but the other teams you know it's uh four teams of three they can okay. come and fight you and steal it and they mm -hmm. get the cash gotcha so as the match goes on the boxes are worth more and more 
So like the first box is worth 10,000. And if you're the team to bring it to the ATM looking thing, mm-hmm. you get 3000. So now the box is only worth 7,000 and whoever has control of it when it opens, they get the 7,000. And by the end, the last box is worth 30,000. So like okay. you could lose every single box, but if you get that last one, you might sneak in because the first, the top two teams go into the next round and then the top two go into the next round. And then that round is the final round and it's the first of 20,000 wins. Okay. So it's it's very interesting. And there's a, a light character, a medium character and a heavy character. And they all have their own different ways to play different weapons, different, uh, options to choose from like the light they have like a a zip line thing they can hook and fly themselves you know and like okay uh heavies they have like a shield they have a barrier mm-hmm. the mediums they can like heal and they have gun turrets so okay. it's it's very diverse and very interesting so i think that's why it's hooking me in kind of like uh almost kind of like what, what would be if you put it in like rpg terms like a rogue support and then you're in like your tank essentially it sounds essentially like. yeah, yeah. and that's that's a pretty good example yeah okay cool cool um i know that so it's probably not a game that you would have ended up playing but just it's making me think because it's in the news that uh playstation and stuff is shutting down servers for concord the game they released a couple weeks ago that was supposed to be like sony's hero shooter it was supposed to be Sony's Overwatch, right? Um, and that kind of it's blown up. It's caught. It's it's a it's a historic dumpster fire. It's a hundred million dollar game that got canceled two weeks after being launched. What? Um, I was curious if you if you had been if you were like familiar with that game at all. Was that something that you had? No, because you've mentioned like Marvel's Rivals, right? Is like yeah. the Marvel themed kind of hero shooter that's coming out, and then like. Yep. Um, I think I remember you maybe mentioning that you had played like a little bit of maybe X Defiant, right? Which is like Ubisoft's type that, of that one. I don't know of. Okay, okay. I think it's like Ubisoft's um hero shooter, essentially, or Battle Royale type game. Yeah, I usually um, stay away from movie. Yeah, don't blame you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was just curious as to whether that was something, but I I'm also thinking I can't remember for, for sure. Do you have a ps4 i have a three okay so i'm i was just wondering curious do you think that it had you maybe had like a, i think it's a ps5 game but if you had a ps5 do you think that that may have maybe been a game that you would have had interest in because from what i want to understand is it was a 40 dollar game at launch it also wasn't a 70 dollar game it was a 40 dollar game um do you think that would have been a game you probably would have maybe tried and I mean, tested it definitely since you're trying been to find in the, in the ballpark yeah because you're trying to find it's, a way to fill that other slot there. You yeah, know? it's just yeah. it's it's hard for me to gravitate towards council just in general mm-hmm. because like as as we all know, I love The Last of Us, and my PS3 is hooked up in my room with that in there. It's just ready to go, and I just I don't even want to turn the PS3 on. I don't want to hold the controller. Yeah, I don't want to sit there on my bed playing you know it's i've really just migrated to sitting in my gaming chair sitting at the desk mouse Mm -hmm. and keyboard Mm -hmm. like even the uh aero gpx game that i play the one that's like f-zero x it says recommended controller i was like no i'll just hard learn the mouse and keyboard controls don't worry about it yeah so it's probably wouldn't have happened but if i was playing console it probably would have been on the radar for sure yeah that's yeah, interesting i know that with um expeditions rome so it's partially controller supported i've played i've been playing that game with controller with my xbox controller plugged into my pc um but there is certain games it's interesting there's other certain games like for instance mountain blade banner lord uh that has an xbox port of it and i can't play it on xbox because Playing it with a controller just feels weird. I have to do mouse and keyboard right. for a game that you would probably think makes more sense to play with a controller because Expeditions Rome is essentially a tactics game. So, like, why are you using? For some reason, the incorporation and utilization of the controller layout is pretty good. 
so it's easy to move it that to use it that way. So I feel right. like I've always kind of been split on that. But for instance, like Valheim, I can play it with both controller and keyboard and mouse. I prefer keyboard and mouse. Um, it could just be that when I started playing that game, that's what I started planning on. So that's the, right. that's the, but then for instance, a game, I was going to bring up Stardew Valley. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Prefer playing that on con- controller. Yeah. I prefer playing that on. Yeah. Like mobile, you know, um, uh, just, but yeah, basically controller layout. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it's really interesting that I think most people, that are really into PC. It's like, hey, keyboard and mouse is just like my thing. Um, for me, it's kind of really, it's really game dependent because a game may make sense to play on controller, but depending on how they choose to use the controller layout and how they bind the buttons or the keys, it could be like, uh, no, I don't want to do this. I'd rather just do keyboard and mouse, especially if it gives me the option right. to key bind, then I can right. make it, you know, work the way I want it to. Well, see, that's I think it's good though, at being in your position because you're more diverse and easier to accommodate yourself. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I, I think it helps. Now, I will say there's some things where like controller. You mentioned like you have your like you have your PS3 hooked up or whatever. I don't know mm-hmm. if you're like me. Um, I find the original PlayStation controllers, so from one to three, um, to be the worst controllers. Ever. really i hate them um definitely and, not the biggest fan yeah and then the ps4 controller is like one of the best controllers ever to me and it's um, crazy they're not that much different but they are though like i mean they, they feel like it right like the way the buttons are positioned the grips are a little longer and they're flatter they're less angled down or angled back you know mm-hmm. Um, and it's just super comfortable. This PlayStation 5 controller is super comfortable. Now, I've always preferred the Xbox ones because ever since the controller S, to me, it's always been the most comfortable controller. And right. I hated the PlayStation controllers. But the last two gens, PlayStation's been killing it. And I'd even give it to... Uh, I recently found a Google Stadia that I had around here. That's right, I have multiple. Uh, and, uh, and the controller for the Google Stadia is actually really comfortable. The buttons feel super cheap. But the actual controller itself feels super comfortable. So I'm like, man, it'd be cool if I could actually plug this into my computer and play games with this. I'd probably prefer to play with my Google Stadia controller because um, right. then I can also save my Xbox controller for my Xboxes. But ain't nothing supporting that controller. So, <laughs> you know, so it's it's just not a whatever, you know. Dead. The Xbox controller has the largest, the greatest, you know, the largest amount of support. So that's just right. what I use. Um, But yeah. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Now, let's move into our topics because you mentioned some games. Um, and so you met, since you mentioned some games, we're going to, if you don't mind, we can transition into, I'll get my topic out the way first here. Yeah. Let's uh, because you mentioned here. some games. So recently, No Man's Sky had their Aquarius update drop. Um, and let's see here, just looking at this report here, it talks about how they've added a bunch of different elements like fishing uh you can do fishing in it you can do you know other diving there's exoskiffs and stuff like that they've just added a bunch of different updates in regards to the world and how everything works in no man's sky so no man's sky um has trend is it's it's essentially it's art and its story is incredible it's actually an incredible game right now uh it has been pretty awesome for a good amount of time and it's it's been I would say for its life been more awesome than it's been terrible, and that's that's uh, something to be that's something for Hello Games and them to be proud of, you know. Right. But um, it made me think because I am not too removed from playing No Man's Sky, and I think I think I tried a little bit last year. I tend to jump in and out of that game every now and then. Um, it made me think if you're someone that jumped into that game when it first launched, left disappointed, came back. And you were like, hey, this is the game that I wanted. And then you've sunk, continued to sink dozens and dozens of hours into it. You're like, hey, you know what? I'm glad that I gave this game a second chance. So I was curious what our games, what games we had that we were glad we gave a second chance. Um, just to get one out the way really quick. And it's because it's one that you mentioned. That okay. game for me is Stardew Valley. 
I'm glad. Oh, yeah. I am glad that I gave Stardew Valley a second chance. I mentioned before that when I first bought Stardew Valley on Steam, I tried to play it on my computer. Matter of fact, we're talking about controls with keyboard and mouse. I tried yep. playing it with keyboard and mouse, playing it on my computer screen. Did was not feeling it. Didn't make sense. It didn't. It didn't click for me. I'm like, ah, eh, I don't like. I just don't like this. And then four, five years later, years later, I decided. You know what? I have this credit for my Nintendo Switch. Let me just go ahead and buy it for my Nintendo Switch and see if I like it then. Uh, like it there. And then I immediately put 40-something hours into it. I was just playing it nonstop. And I'm like, I love this game. Like, I That's love it. change the pace. Exactly. Like, I love it. So you go from a game where you're like, I can't stand this. I don't even understand why this is even here to I love this game. And then uh, went from that when I finally got my Steam Deck. I'm like, okay, well, let me see if I like it's like Stardew Valley on my Steam Deck since I've owned it on Steam for five or six, for seven years at the time. Loved it even more. And so much so, there was a period where my partner was playing Stardew Valley on the Nintendo Switch, and I was playing it on my Steam Deck, and I'm pretty sure that between both of us in that interim of time, we each probably dropped 60 hours into the game. She probably dropped a little more. Dang. So I think, uh, not I think, I know for a fact, Stardew Valley is one of those games that I am so glad that I gave it a second chance and I did I just didn't cast it as a bad steam purchase that I made because I bought it for cheap or I had right. some store credit and just decided to try it out um yeah it's it's proven to be like one of my favorite games I talked before about how much love I have for Harvest Moon and how I wanted something to scratch that itch I had something that scratched that itch I just wasn't interacting with it in a way that scratched the itch essentially right. so uh giving it a second chance and actually allowing myself to do that I'm gra grateful for that. Grateful for my Nintendo Switch. That actually did something there. That <laughs> that made itself worth the purchase. You right. Know? So, yeah. I would say Stardew Valley that lines up is uh, the first one that comes to mind for sure. Uh, it's, it's like it's like you subconsciously knew like that game was the game to yeah. scratch the itch. And you're like, let's try it again. And it just it worked out amazingly. 100%. You yep. know, uh, the, the first one for me... I, this is when I first bought a computer to play games on, mm -hmm. and all I did was play Step Mania on it, and my friends, a few of them were like, hey, you should download this game. I was like, I don't, it's not really my thing, you know, it was, it was PUBG, right? And at the time, if I wasn't playing Step Mania, I was playing Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And that, well, that was pretty much it. So eventually, they convinced me, and I played it. I'm like, yeah, that's, it's not, I don't like it, especially since... It was my first mouse and keyboard game. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. But my friends kept inviting me. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll play with you guys. And then push comes to shove, I put 800 hours into it. Yeah. I was like, all right, okay. I'm I'm glad I decided to yeah. play that, which pushed right. me into to Apex. I knew I was going to love Apex as soon as that came out. Yeah. Now I got 3,000 in that one. 3,500, to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, PUBG is my first game. Do you feel like you would have found or looked at Apex without having had first gone through an experience what PUBG was was in that whole battle royale kind of genre? I think I would have, but only because it was made by Respawn. Okay. And it yeah. was the Titanfall world. That yeah. was the only reason I would have tried it if I didn't play PUBG. Yeah. Because at the at the respawn Titanfall connection, so it's like I, exactly. And yeah. I've been like, oh, okay, they made this. You know, I I might like it, and I mm -hmm. might have enjoyed it just as much as I do. But I'm like, oh, you know what? This isn't actually Titanfall. I don't want to play this. Right, PUBG kind of you know, gave you a, a, a it better gave me sense the push. Of, yeah, it gave you like a better sense of what it might be. Right, like I, I like kind of like this is what this this genre of game is essentially, and now. Right. Here's this IP with this world that you're familiar with, with these shooting mechanics, with this developer you're familiar with, and we're entering this genre. So you've experienced this genre from what was at time, I think, the preeminent representation of that genre. PUBG yeah. was Battle Royale for a minute, and it said, here's another representation of that. And it's just kind of, you're like, okay, I understand what, what a Battle Royale is. This is everything. I was going to try this anyway, but now I understand what kind of world this is in from a gameplay perspective, I guess. 
Right. Yeah. I started off with a lot more game sense and strategy than I would have because obviously Apex and Titanfall have pretty much not much anything in common except for being in the same world. Mm -hmm. So it gave me a little extra edge. Nice. Nice. Um, My second game that I have here. Um. I'm not going to say this is again games we're glad we gave a second chance. I'm not going to say I love this game. Though I kind <laughs> of do. So love hate I, relationship? Yes, love hate relationship and I think it'll make sense when I name this game. Uh this game is called Limbo, okay? Um, oh yeah. When I first played this game, I played a little bit of it and then I stopped playing it and then I if I if I can recount exactly, I believe um cursed vehemently at the developers and whatever deity of which they pray to uh i was completely uh just hated the game hated everything about it it made me angry uh but it was something about the atmosphere and the representation of the game and i went back into it and i you may say oh you learned you learned to love it no i still hated it (laughs) I hated it so much. That's the game you hate beat, right? Yes. I hated it so much that I beat it. Um, Part of that was because I don't, I didn't want to walk away from that experience, hating that game without trying to at least fully understand the game and understand what the developers were trying to do. You wanted to hate Um, it with actual experience behind it. I wanted to hate it with context, with full context. That's Um, the word I was looking for. But, but um, what did happen is that though I continued to hate it, I also learned to appreciate it. And I learned to appreciate what the developers were trying to do from story playing element, from a gameplay mechanics element, right? Um, and so that was really beneficial, I think, for my growth as just someone who plays games. That, hey, even in things that we dislike vehemently, that we dislike, that we hate even, that there's some kind of value we can glean from it. And it can introduce us to other things. Had I not played, had I not hate beat Limbo, I would have never played inside and I loved inside. Right. So, um, there you go. so I, I think that's the value of it. That's another one where I'm very happy that I gave it a second chance and decided to, to, to hate beat it. And I mean, Hey, it lucks out that the game is like a three, four hour game. I don't know if you can hate beat a 30 hour game. I don't know if you can do yeah, it. That is, that is like, that is an immense amount of hatred that you have to have. An unhuman, an unhuman yeah. amount of hatred that you'd have to harness to beat a twenty or thirty hour game. But luckily, it's a three four hour game. That hate fueled me through. I I had hate. I've never had so much purpose in my hate before in my life, and I was able to <laughs> use it to get it done. Uh, sometimes hate has its advantages. Sometimes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Another one I would have to say is Overwatch. Now, originally, one of my friends who made me play PUBG was like, hey, you should play Overwatch with me. And he explained what it was, you know, tank, healer, DPS. I'm like, I've never played a game like that. I'm not really interested. You know, he plays a lot of WoW, so that's right up his alley in a sense. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, screw it, whatever. I bought the game. I played with him for a couple hours. And I was like, "I, I don't really know about this. You know, I've never played a game like that, even with a map objectives mm-hmm. more so besides like call of duties like capture the headquarters which overwatch has you know uh i forget what it's called it's king of the hill kind of but like the whole relying on other people just isn't really my thing especially like call of duty i could just run the lobby by myself and be fine mm-hmm. but eventually it just got stuck to me it just glued, obviously. I put 3,000 hours into it. But he played the game for a total of six hours, eight hours, and just ditched me. I was like, bro, you made me buy this game. You wanted me to play with you. And now I have infinitely more time in you in this game. Thanks. <laughs> but I enjoyed it while I could. Yeah. Hey, you just you try to take the value that you can from something, right? Right. Yeah, 100%. Um, let's see, the last game here that kind of really sticks out to my mind that I'll give is another game I've talked about before. It's a game that I love. So it's another one of these. It's like the first one. Grew to love it. Uh, that game is The Guild 2 Renaissance. 
Um, I played it, and I've said this before. I played it and then was going to give up because the game doesn't work. The game just doesn't work sometimes. I cannot stress this <laughs> enough. The game just doesn't work sometimes. And so at first, I mean, obviously I'm going into this as a regular gamer consumer. So right. my mind is like, oh, this doesn't work. I should get a refund. But as I watched more videos and became more accustomed to it, they're like, hey, it doesn't work. Here's how you work around that. Here's how you work around the fact that it don't work. Um, you make those workarounds, you learn different things, you're able to get deep and immersed into it. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm 100% in now. This is a medieval family dynasty game where I can own multiple businesses. I can become a politician and I can also um, assassinate rival families. This is everything I want. It's right you know up what I'm saying? Alley. It's right up my alley. It is, it is literally big ambition, big ambitions meets software ink meet crusader kings 3 it's it's all those culminating in the one and uh but first i had to get over the fact that the game doesn't work sometimes as i said the pause doesn't pause the game it just slows it down really really slow but it's still running um that's the crazy. fact the fact that sometimes your your family member gets stuck in a workshop and they can't leave and they endanger themselves into servitude and you're trying to say hey go home you need to go make an heir with your spouse so that your family can continue or else the game ends and he's like no i gotta work i gotta bake these muffins uh it's it's <laughs> it's an absurd thing that happens all the time but again i'm glad that uh that i've played it i think so far i haven't played it in a while but if i have to check that so far I have about yeah you know, a touch under basically forty hours in it. Oh wow! Um and uh, yeah, I think that's I think I'm probably another twenty to thirty hours short on that. I think that game probably needs to have way more time into it. But you know, I, I play things in waves. So right now I've been concentrating on Expedition Rome, but eventually I will get back to that. It's another game that I have to learn to love, but I eventually did. And I'm glad Great. I gave it a second chance. Um. I think, uh, yeah, okay, so many, many years ago, 12, 13, my friend wanted us to come over and uh, play a game with her, and I wasn't really, really interested. Again, this is my Call of Duty days, Call of Duty days, that's all I played, mm -hmm. right? And they wanted to play this single-player story game. I was like, I'm, I'm not really interested. You know, so we went over and we we're watching her play and we played a little bit. I'm like, it, it's not too bad. But then, like, some of the cutscenes were happening. I was like, OK, this is actually pretty interesting. And eventually I bought a PS3 just to play this game all the way through. It was The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. We all know how much I love that game. Right. It. So it's very crazy how it went from I have no interest in this game mm -hmm. and then watched a little bit. And I was like, you know what? OK, maybe. And then eventually. We we beat the game, you know, I missed like the first 20 minutes, half an hour of play. So I missed the whole part with her daughter, with his daughter uh, and yeah, yeah. all this stuff. So I was missing like a lot of context. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, OK, this. Wow. I like it even more now. Mm -hmm. So it. That's Last of Us, most definitely. I'm so glad I decided to give it to go. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a it's a crazy thing. It's the same thing like with movies or anything like that. Like sometimes you stumble across things, and the first time you interact with it, you're like, eh, I don't know, you know. And then it's just as time goes on, it just connects with you somehow, and you're like, I can't get this thing out of my brain. And then all of a sudden, it's I got to play this. And now I got to keep playing. I got to keep playing it. And now all of a sudden, I have dozens and maybe hundreds of hours into something you know yeah uh do you have any more i don't i don't think that i have any that i was really like really reluctant to play at first and then eventually got into if there was one that i would think of most recently that maybe it was like uh i'm not sure but i'll go ahead and bite and it ended up turning out good that would probably be final fantasy 16 um and i would say because i played that demo it's like a right. two two and a half hour demo and then I was like, I'm not sure about Final Fantasy because I I don't remember liking them. And then I played the demo and I was like, oh, I'm interested in this. And then I bought the game and played the game and I was like, oh, OK, this is awesome. You know, um, 
But I, I would say that's pretty much it, really. I don't have any, but I don't have any that's like Limbo or like Stardew, where it's like, ah, eh, get right. away. And then I eventually like it, you know. Because I was, uh, I was gonna ask, is there a game that you think you want to give a second chance that you think you're gonna get into? Because I have one. Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, if I check, is it like a game where we played it at first and we were like, uh, I don't know, let me try it again. And I'm eventually going to try it again. I do. And you know what? People might be surprised. Um, that game is The Witcher 3. Really? Because I played, and I have to, I eventually I want to play it again because right now me and my partner are going through watching the Netflix series. Uh-huh. I really, so really, good. at least it's the so first good. two seasons. Yeah. I oh really, really God. enjoyed uh, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. I really enjoyed that game for what I played. And I want to go back and play it. But for some reason, I couldn't get into The Witcher 3 the way I got into The Witcher 2. So I think I want to, even though The Witcher 3 is arguably better in every way, as far as mechanically, story, all the different stuff. At least I've heard right. Um So I want to give The Witcher 3 another chance because it's so good. It's another one of those games I bought very early on when I had Steam. And I tried it a little and I'm like, "Ah, I just just don't, I don't know. I just can't, I just can't get into it for some reason. So that's another one I want to give a try. What about you? You know, that's a very popular game. Oh, yeah. Um, For me, I, I really want to have the urge to play Cyberpunk. You really want to want to play. I Cyberpunk. really want to want to play that game. Yeah. Because it's kind of like No Man's Sky. It's been updated dramatically. Mm-hmm. It was up for game of the year, at least the download DLC was mm-hmm. last year. Like so it, it's become a very great game. But yeah. when we first played it, when it first came out, so many glitches and this and that, and I had a bad experience. I couldn't play the story anymore because one of the guys right. got stuck. So like I just had a bad taste in my mouth. But like I know. It's a great game now, and I probably would put couples of tens, maybe a hundred hours into it. Yeah. Now you have that PC, right? Yeah. Yeah. And see, I have that for Xbox. That is another game that I've that I've thought about. This is, but this is what I'm talking about. One of my frustrations with with my with me being stupid and buying all these freaking games, and I got all these backstories, these backlogs of games, and I just can't. Even though that's part of the backlog, I can't just I, my backlog's too thick. I got to thin it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So right. Um, it's it's like that's that's another game I would love to go back to and try to because like you said, they've done so many updates, and the the bones had great bones. Said at the time, this thing's got some really great looking bones. It's just mm-hmm. everything around it is kind of eh. yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be another one to jump into. You might like that one. More, I know, you know especially I, because I, like, I'm just like, oh, let's do my daily stuff. Let's play this game. Hey, you know. Uh, Cause I have a desktop icon and everything. It just it stares at me every time I turn my computer on. Yeah, and I never click it. Oh yeah, I feel you. Sits there. Yeah. But that kind of leads me into my topic. Yeah. If you think we're good to go. Oh yeah. Okay. What's your topic? So, my topic is what well, games like Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky and Apex, Overwatch, stuff like this, like. Not exactly just live service, but games that have updates. Mm -hmm. Generally, at least the ones, you know, I play with like battle passes and, you know, stuff like that. There's usually like a big, quote unquote, updates, usually every three months. Now, you have a lot of gamers to kind of please, right? You have the hardcore ones that play every day eight hours a day some people make a living off these games and then there's some people that play your game maybe an hour or two a week if they have time Mm -hmm. you know and three months we'll just you know we'll play with that number is that a good time frame you know the person who only plays an hour or two a week that's only 20 hours they get to play before a huge update comes and they're like okay i have to get used to this now but then mm-hmm. you have the people playing eight hours a day for three months and it's like all right where where's this update and i can't right. wait for it any longer i'm kind of getting bored right. so like even though that's a thing is three months generally a good time frame hmm. so that's an interesting question for one i wonder if three months is a good time frame from a development standpoint 
I'm thinking, to me at least, in my cynical mind, the update schedule probably aligns with quarterly earnings schedules. That's what I'm thinking. So let's release these Ooh, I never updates. even thought about that. Let's release these updates at these certain amount of times where we can therefore count because when you whenever they drop an update, that's when you get an influx of players, whether it's new or pre-existing, right? right? So like this is our best player number for this quarter because we just dropped this update, right? But let's keep it going that way. Um yeah, as far as like how it works, like you said, if you're someone that plays the game very infrequently and you've only got maybe 15 to 20 hours in before a new update, a big update, especially if it changes a lot of key mechanic things, maybe it changes like weapon damage or weapon types or something, then you're almost kind of relearning a portion of the game, right? Um, right. And if you're someone that you know designates eight hours a day to a game, three months can seem like an eternity because you've put, I don't know, what, freaking... 200 300 plus hours into a game before it has a big update you know right um i feel like three months i don't i don't know where it lies so in in that case i feel like three months maybe maybe works best because it covers all those things it it, it helps it helps the company the publisher with their earnings report and their this is our peak you know peak of the players for the month mm -hmm. um if you're someone that doesn't play a lot I mean, you know, by the time you hit 15, 20 hours in a game, unless they change everything, you have a pretty decent understanding of the basics, I feel like. And then it's kind of easy to yeah. upskill yourself to more of the like nuanced, advanced stuff, unless they just completely just change things from a fundamental basis. Um, and then if you're someone else that's putting crazy hours into it, hey, chief. Slow down. You got I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. What to, if you're putting. If you're putting like eight hours into like Fortnite a day, and you're like, hey, they didn't do an update. It's been three months since they did it. Hey, man, people gotta eat and sleep and poop and stuff. You gotta. <laughs> you gotta figure out. You gotta scale back. Uh, I mean, I. I don't. I don't know. You know, development is 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 crazy and, and like you said, these are big updates. So they're always releasing small patches and other things, and those can happen. You know, in between time, Random, a little, yeah, just randomly, yeah. just infrequently, they can hot fix something, you know. Uh, but um, yeah, I think maybe maybe the three months works. That's 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 three. That's that's four big updates a year, right? Now, right. when it comes to like bigger things, like 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 super big, like content, like brand new content things, you know, like No Man's Sky just had, right? Um, those usually happen like what, maybe like once a year. Once a year, once every 16 months, sometimes it feels like. Um, I think those can happen more frequently. Maybe those big updates can happen more frequently. I think it also really depends on the game. I think for I think for something like Apex, every three months, big updates, that seems like that's decent. If we're talking about like we're talking about like launch, launch day or, or launch condition anthem, you ain't got three months, brother. You gotta come up with something. <laughs> If we're talking about if we're talking about Concord, like Concord is worth about as being dead. It's dead two weeks. It's mm -hmm. DOA two weeks after it came out. You ain't got three months. It's, That's you know, a good point. You, yeah, you ain't got three months. You got to figure out something super quick. Um, and especially if it's content that was promised either in a launch state or at a certain at a certain update drop. Like you've got to get that stuff going. You know what I'm saying? Like I think not maybe a month or so ago they talked about one of the updates they did for Starfield. Uh, we're basically buggies now, where you can actually drive buggies around the terrain, around the planet. Homie, it's been a year since this game out came out. And we could just now drive buggies on these big-ass planets you put with nothing on them. Brother, you had to have come out with that. Maybe you, like That should have been at launch. Two, three months. If it's not coming out at launch, it should have came out within three to four months after launch. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it, it, you, it, Something like that is where it's like... Because then the player count dwindles, it dies, and then what are you really what is all this development supporting really right it's going to cost more that's the reason they shut down concord it's going to cost more to keep to to keep the servers up than it was going to be for like with concord they're i think they they, they think they sold twenty five thousand copies they're refunding everyone their money it's cheaper for them to refund everyone their money and close down the servers than it is to keep those servers up and pay for development on the game that's that's doa you know what i'm saying so like that's how many copies it sold allegedly twenty five thousand. so yeah. 
for a hundred million dollar game developed That's disgusting developed disgusting. by or published by sony it's a first party game but um like again so your update schedule has got to change those big updates have got to happen a little sooner you know what i'm saying or they have to happen at a weird infrequent schedule until you can reach equilibrium that's why i mean no man's sky is such a rare case but cyberpunk is such a rare case where a game can have that big of a botch of a launch and different things, but still update and update and update and get it consistent and good to where it can support the player base. The player base comes back and everyone's enjoying the game and it's given the chance and opportunity and time to be great. Um, right. But even then, those 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 updates and those patches were pretty consistent. And I feel like for games like Apex and like Fortnite, um, those updates, they might lag, but they're probably more consistent than not. They're probably more consistent than like Warzone or something like that, right? So like, um, right. You know, I think I think uh, they're probably a little bit. May- I don't know. They may be more consistent than even something like Overwatch. I'm not sure, but um, I think I think once every three months, if your game is on the up and up, I think that's fine. You know, you're going to obviously have people that play that play it to death, and they're going to want something every week. But like, that's just not that's not really viable. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna have to really uh, kind of like agree with you here. Uh, even myself, that's put so much time in the Apex. The three month window is, I think, a good amount of time because one, just sitting there playing ranked, I have more time to try to get higher ranked, which mm-hmm. you know never happens. I hit diamond if I'm lucky, and that's it every season. Same with Overwatch. But, like, I, I have time to get used to the maps. I have time to get used to the damage mm. the guns do. Mm-hmm. I have time to get used to what guns are in the care packages that come down. Like, they they make bigger changes than Apex. Like, oh, there's a new map, so I have time to get used to the map. Or they made a right. huge change on an old map, which they do all the time. So I'm like, okay, I have time yeah. to get used to this and remember this. Like, it's... it's it's good in my opinion. And like even in Overwatch, it was about the same. The battle passes are about three months. No, it's not as drastic as Apex. Like, yeah, sure, some damage might change between the characters or their mm-hmm. health might go off a little bit. But they also, you know, they introduce a new map and they introduce new characters. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also a pretty decent time. You know, it's same thing in the cop. If you have time to try and rank up and everything like that. But like, uh, uh, wow, BeatStar, a game I, I played a lot. I don't really play it right now because the arrow button, uh, arrow keys don't really work on my phone. So I haven't played. But like that battle pass was only 20 days. Okay. You know, and then it'd be a new one and it'd be like new songs. So like that game coming out with new songs every 20 days, not too bad. I think it should be pushed to a month. And the cost should be down because it's it's ten bucks for that battle pass. Yeah. And it's only twenty days. Ten bucks is the battle pass for Overwatch, Fortnite, Apex, and those are three months long. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think you have a good point. I think it's gonna be based, you know, game to game or like No Man's Sky when it has like a yearly sixteen month. It could be, you know, a ten month a yearly thing instead of being that yeah. drastic. Yeah, you you made some good points. You know, I was I was set on, you know, three months being yeah, but yeah, a, a month could be a good update. Uh, a year could be a good update. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You made yeah. Some points. Yeah. It's it, it, yeah. It, even like just the the game, like the game drama, like you were saying, like a month for something like BeatStar probably it makes more sense. Um, because. For one, like you're saying, like you play on your phone, and there's other ways you can play BeatStar, but, um, um, but like, and it was BeatStar, right? That was, that was yeah. Okay, cool. But like, um, yeah, like, it's mobile game. You're having to update new songs. What was, was the actual development lift for, in, in, like, in putting these songs into the into the game and stuff like that? Versus mm-hmm. like, No Man's Sky is a space exploration, so they have to make sure that you can theoretically fish on possibly 200 billion procedurally generated planets uh like it's, it's it can take it can take a little it can take a right. little longer like it kind of like it, it makes sense a little bit you know um i think another a game that was kind of having problems with that was halo infinite like one of the major gripes i was hearing with major with halo infinite was that like 
Like, what? Like, why? Why are you guys taking so effing long with these maps? Like, can we get some new maps? And you yeah, would what think is it, there are only like three maps or something. Yeah, Four maps? and it's and it's and, it's, and you're kind of like your Halo. Just use the old map. Where the old maps go? <laughs> just use just use the just, old ones. Just you have the old there. maps they in there. there. So you can, and so you can make new ones. These other games are constantly building brand new maps. Can't you just right. toss some old? You can't find some maps from 2004 and toss them into but your you game. Know how many people would have loved to have the Halo Three maps, let oh, alone yeah. Halo Two and One. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, like you, you like they hey, so like, many games to pull from. Oh yeah! Can you imagine if they? I mean, you couldn't use a lot of the cool. You you could use a good bit of them, but you could imagine if they got what was it called? The Gorge, the Valley, whatever that map is from the first halo that they like that was like the map they used to create red and blue um mm-hmm. like if if that was hey you brought this map back i mean you could if you brought it for people were probably freaking just throw themselves out a window if you did that you know it what i'm saying like to it like 100 but it's like can't you just grab some, can't you grab some maps from odst and just throw them in there everyone hates that game just find some of those maps and put them in there right you know i have to people won't even recognize them they wouldn't because they didn't play it no one played that <laughs> game. Uh, <laughs> that, well, this is a cool map. Oh yeah, it's actually old. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't. I I've played this every Halo new. game. This and is new. I I haven't seen this one before. You played ODST. Um, what was that? It's almost like a swear word. I haven't played ODST. <laughs> oh, you're familiar with ODST? What did you just call me? But um, <laughs> you said what? Exactly. That was a, that was a hard T. Exactly. Very hard T. ODST. But um. Oh. Yeah, it's it's something like that. You know, you got to be able to update. I think they did like an update like one every eight or ten months. Like you, there's you got to there's a, a, a you know, there's a certain standard that you have to kind of abide by when you're developing and making updates for games like that. And it just feels like three months just kind of feels like you're getting four big updates a year, some little patches and fixes in between. You may get like one super big content drop. They may happen if they completely redevelop something. Um that feels like it kind of works the best, I think, for all your different types of players, as well as what the developers can support. And right. again, it helps the publishers with their quarterly numbers. They can say these, this, 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 and this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it seems like that works best. But like I said, again, also all depends on the game. If you're telling me, hey, it's B Star is every three months, I'd say uh, that's ridiculous. I, I need something fresh. Yeah, it, it's yeah. A very good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I even think I can't even remember. I, I even something I feel like something even like uh, um, Smash Bros. I feel like even has kind of like I can't remember what the update or the new character reveal stuff was for that, but that happens kind of like that. It's all really, it's all very strange. These companies do them differently, and you can kind of see which companies are best based upon the performance of the game, like right. the the release standard of how you release characters for for Marvel's Avengers, right? Versus like you know. Oh, speaking of, that's another one though. What is it? Uh, um, no, what is it? Um, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, right? That's right. that's basically dead. Um, because they were messing around and doing stupid stuff with that. So, got to figure it out. Three months feels like it's it's prob it probably works the best. Naturally, it just probably falls into place. Whatever. Yeah, it it's multiple companies, multiple studio studio, just multiple different people doing the same thing, and mm-hmm. something has to be at least kind of right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember what the update schedule for games like the on the kind of games to service games I you would usually play, which has really just been the division. And I can't remember what their kind of update schedule was. Um, but they usually have like one big content drop. They do either within the year or maybe around a year after the game comes out. So, okay, that's cool. But then they usually don't do anything else. That's not good. Uh, but arguably the game's dead after a year already, so who knows? You know, right? That's you know, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Well, we're near the end of the episode, which leaves us final thoughts. We can offer a final thought about anything related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who would like to give their final thought first? I'll go first. Okay. Okay. So. Based on my topic, right? Except it's not video games. It's magic. Okay? So okay. they also had four sets a year. And then they'll have 
some random stuff like, oh, look, there's these really flashy cards that are at Comic-Con or like, here's this really cool. Uh, I forget what it's called when two different brands collide. Like like collaboration or collaboration. That's the word. Or... Yeah. Like, oh, look, we have this collaboration and they'll have that set. So they like, okay. they'll have the four main sets a year and then a little little bit a side quest. Right. Mm-hmm. But now Magic, I think, is owned by Hasbro now. And okay, it is ridiculous how many sets they are releasing a year. <laughs> like Magic is already a cash grab game. Especially yeah. if you play like tournaments and stuff mm-hmm. and. Four, four sets a year is a pretty decent amount of money people are spending to stay current and play standard and stuff like that. But like yeah. now I think there's like six sets and there's all these collaboration sets and there's mm-hmm. these other things. And it's just you, magic. You were releasing too many cards in a year. Mm-hmm. OK, us. TCG addicts only have so much money, oh, money, yeah. most of us, at least. I know there are some whales out there. Mm-hmm. OK, of course there is. There's some in every division of every single category that we have. Mm-hmm. But the average customer can only spend so much. Please just settle down a little bit. That's all I ask. I don't even play anymore, but like, come on. You're going to dig yourself a hole that you can't get out of because no one wants to stay on top of 20 sets a year. Right. It's that's my final thought. Yeah, I mean, look, the the thing is, they're just going to want you to keep up with the whales. Right. Um, or, or maybe not even keep up 100 percent, but just you're just a step two or three. They're they're optimizing their release. For how much money they believe people will spend. It's all a numbers game they're playing, right? They know that the whale is going to buy whenever, however, however many, whenever, whenever they put something out, whenever they do a drop, whenever they do a collab or a crossover, right? Right. But, I mean, you're not going to pay. You're not going to pay what the whales are paying. You're, you know Absolutely what I'm not. But you're not going to let the whales get that much ahead of you. You let them get ahead of you. Absolutely, I am. Yeah? I, I can't. Like, uh, even when I played... Uh... Dragon Ball Z, you know, they had a a good release window. And I think that was four sets a year and everything. Okay. But like there was people I did it for one set. OK, let's let's not get into that. But there's people that buys boxes of boxes. Every set. OK, that a box, I think, was like a 100 bucks. And then like mm. a box of boxes, I think, was either six boxes or 12 boxes. I want to say 12 boxes. It's like, it's like insane Mm. just to do that every set. I understand if they're doing it as a like, Hey, I'm going to open all these cards so I can sell them. But there's some people are just like, I, I just want all the cards. Yeah. And that's GG whales. Okay. There you go. That's what everyone says. That's what everyone says to all the whales. GG whales. If you're, you know, some uh, moron playing Madden Ultimate Team, GG Wales. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, for one, you deserve it. You're, you're playing you're Madden Ultimate Team. You're buying Madden cards. Oh, I'm going to go in here and uh, buy a Madden card of Brock Osweiler. You deserve to get GG'd by a whale. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Um, my final thought is that uh, September... The next game that's coming out that I'm looking forward to that will be on Game Pass, Frostpunk 2. Oh, yeah. I think it, I think it comes out September 20th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I yeah, have I not... the end of the month. Yeah, I have not jumped back into Manor Lords. Uh, very surprised myself very much that in the same time of which Manor Lords came, back, came out, I decided to instead play... A two-year-old tactical RPG based on Rome, <laughs> uh, but that's just how that's just how my world works. It's it's, it's the um, timing. Yeah, so you'll play Mandalorian Lord so, in five years. You're like you know what? I like it. Yeah, I, I've given them some more time. I think I talked about before how like now they've actually recently added goats, and I think that you can actually um, milk the goats and have their the have goat milk as an actual category. 
And we talk about updates. This was the big update for Mandalore. You can <laughs> goats. get goats. Goats are in the game. That's, that's, that's a goats update, man. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, Frostpunk 2 coming out into September. I want to jump into it. I have a sneaking suspicion that I just, I won't. But I, I, like, you want to want, you know what I'm saying? I want I feel to, you. I, know exactly I want to want to play Frostpunk 2. But we'll just see how it works out. Because I play on Bane Down Expeditions Run. What, what knows? Who knows what game will, this might exhaust me. I might not want to play any games anymore after Expeditions Run, you know? Ooh. it's it's just a matter of we've talked before about how like you, you try to you find a game that hooks you and then it's it's rare like it's for me it's extremely rare to get a game that hooks me this game has hooked me for over 60 hours i don't know if i have it in me to have anything else hook me right after right this you know a like, little chill pill moment Take a little chill pill play some dumb sports game make my mind my brain dumber than it already is and then uh, maybe then I can stupidly wander into a game that hooks me. Um, there you go, you know game plan. I'm so focused right now. I'm so cerebral with all the tacticals so that I need to go play a dumb football <laughs> game so it can so it can dumb me down and smooth my brain a little bit, and then it can hook me. Like it, it feels good sometimes, else. you know. It does. It does. I feel like you know, but people have been talking about that Black Myth Wukong game, and I'm looking into that, thinking about possibly getting that. But also, people, let's not forget another game that I was excited about: Rise of Ronin that everyone was also excited about and then not excited about because it wasn't that good, your boy might be looking for it. Because I'm pretty sure that's probably cheaper to get now than uh, Armor Core. So Probably. Yeah, I'm going to look into it. We're getting into holiday season, people. Look out for those sales. Um, anyway, that's my final thought. That brings us to the end of level 115 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. The gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. If you like what you heard, please like and follow the podcast on your preferred podcast service. Uh, you can also like and follow the podcast on the socials like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course, YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us with those dollar dollar bills, y'all, or perhaps some of that theoretical monies you've been building up, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Well, we prefer real money, not theoretical. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One oh, is... Is uh go to our merch store, Teespring, our spring store. You can check out things there. We have shirts, we have hats, we have cell phone cases, we have a bunch of different things you can check out, a bunch of different designs. Black guy, black guy woman is there, the TMP uh uh logo is there, David's face with the signature saying of what up is there. What up? Bunch of different things are there, you can check that out. Also, we have a Patreon. If you want to support your boys there, we have three tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier, each offering a uh, good Nice uh, goodies and, and bits to, to look into and to check out. Um, most recent stuff on there being, of course, the um, uh, uh, Game Dev Tycoon uh, series that's there, as well as some other exclusive stuff that's there. So make sure to check that out. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. David, did you have anything else you want to add? Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs> <laughs>